The announcement of the FTSE International deal, alleged deal with the NSC will create the FTSE NSC uh, share and bond indices to be marketed to international investors across the globe. Now we know that the FTSE a group already marked around 120,000 equity bond and alternative investment uh, assets to the international community. What type of impact do you think this is likely to have on a demand from foreign investors for Kenya, uh, Kenya stocks? Well, looking at uh, that deal that we saw recently, definitely that's a very positive mark, especially for our market. And uh, looking at it from a historical point of view, we've been seeing foreign participation in our market being very significant. For example, yesterday we saw foreign participation being uh, well, well over 60 percent of the day's volumes. And because of that, that, sh that shows that yeah, foreigners are very, very keen on how our market performs. And uh, that such a partnership automatically creates a very good opportunity or a platform for our market to be able to uh, increase some of its product diversity as well as try to see to increase the revenue range and also try to be able to create more investor participation especially from the foreign front when it comes to online trading though uh, Kenya still uses traditional trading methods so surely this would be some de a de development <laughs> that would need to be um, included in the exchange in order to appeal to those in international investors well, definitely, yes. That's a very good point that you note there. Basically, looking at our, at our market, we've, we've not yet developed our online platform as such. And uh, right now, there's a broker back office system that's already on the, uh, on the, on the pipeline. And definitely, if, if that can be able to come to the fore, and also investors as well as uh, stock brokerage firms be able to t take advantage of that so that they can be able to still open up our market for, for investors to be able to access it as well as trade and see, view their transactions online, definitely that would be one, uh, one good way forward, basically, for our market. And hopefully, we'll be able to see uh, especially such arrangements going forward we'll be able to create more opportunities as well as financing for some of these uh, ventures let's take a look at individual stocks the capital market authority has lifted the suspension of trade on a Tumi supermarket as shares now these uh, shares were suspended in june 2006 due to financial and operational difficulties they had a botched up expansion plan as well as just some internal control issues now looking at the company where it is um, almost four years later what type of appetite do you think we'll see for the stock given that it hasn't been traded for around four years and it has had some time to turn itself around. Well, thank you very much, Samantha. Basically, looking at uh, so, uh, Uchumi as one of the retail stocks that have been trading, it had been trading in our market. There's a lot of investor appetite and also uh, as a, uh, a curiosity as well as interest on how the market is going to be able to react to such an uplifting of the suspension. And looking at it, especially from the front of the fact that the company has come from a very far point, especially just as you noted there, from management problems to financial crisis and being able to now return to profitability and have its suspension lifted, there's a lot of investor appetite and interest in how it's going to start trading and uh, looking at how the trading price was when it went it, it, uh, it was suspended it was around 14 shillings and 50 cents and hopefully we'll be able to see it being supported at that point right now there's still not no clear indication as to when specifically it will start trading but investors are already very very curious and anxious about it I guess the only concern would be the aspect of the debenture conversion into equity because that might create more liquidity of the uh, or availability of the stock but definitely going forward there's a lot of uh, positive sentiments about the stock and hopefully we'll be able to see it trading and uh, being able to still being taken up positively for our market. And of course it has, as you say, been the only listed retailer uh, on the Kenya Stock Exchange. Now just moving on to power companies, the Kengen, which contributes around 65% of the country's power, has signed a 7.4 billion uh, shilling loan agreement with the German Development Bank, partly to finance a geothermal development as well as um, the Olcario power plant expansion. Now we know that Kenya has a power shortfall or a looming power shortfall given the increase in demand for electricity as the economy recovers and the government has also stated its in it intention to invest in geothermal so a positive de development for the country but from an investor perspective is this a good thing for Kenjane given they have already high uh, financing costs? Well, definitely, just as you observed there, which is an excellent observation about, about Kenjan, uh, being a power generator in our market, and especially because of the demand that you are seeing and the, and the supply that seems to be uh, uh, creating a, a gap, there is a big concern about how Kenjan is going to be able to bridge that gap. And as of now, I guess the concern for Kenjan is how they are going to be able to finance some of these very capital intensive uh, schemes. Because right now, the over reliance on hydro is not very sus uh, sustainable, especially because of the, uh, of the unreliability of our climate. And because of that, there is a huge 
huge concern for Kenjan to be able to shift to more renewable energy sources because even uh, uh, reliance on petroleum is also becoming a bit of a concern. Well, looking at it in terms of the financing cost, especially because of the trading price of the stock, it's a, another concern, especially for shareholders, because right now they already have a, a, a bond that's already trading in the market and uh, the interest rate is a bit of a concern right now because the market is already slightly lower and also creating a bit of a push on how the company is going to be able to still sustain its bottom line, which is another, another major concern for shareholders. And also looking at how the share price has been trading, it's already reflecting a bit of that in, ter in terms of most investors looking at the stock more of a, as a long term as opposed to a medium term stock. Let's move on to the other power company, Kenya Power. Now, this company, what is your preference for between the two stocks? Because they're more involved in the distribution side of the economy. And of course, um, we're seeing that increased demand for electricity coming through. We know that Kenya has around an 800 megawatt shortfall in electricity, and they'll need to install this in the next five years to meet demand. How would you play these stocks against each other in, say, the short to medium term? Well, looking at it in terms of uh, Kenya Power and Lighting, well, just as you noted there, it's enjoying a lot of uh, favors right now because it's a, uh, it is a monopoly. And because of that, I guess it's being able to control the quantity as well as the price of how it's able to price its product. And because of that, the profit profitability aspect of the company is almost guaranteed and because of that I guess it's a fairly good stock to be able to look at I guess the only concern for Kenya Power and Lighting as of now would be the shareholding structure because the government still controls a significant portion of Kenya Power and Lighting which creates a bit of a concern because of privatization but looking at it also on the other front of the fact that it's, it's, uh, its structures are very capital in intensive we see the government's stake being a, another positive front and looking at it in terms of a medium term stock I would go definitely for Kenya Power and Lighting because I guess looking at it from the distribution point of view, it is very well placed to continue in, in profitability. Just very quickly, Samuel, we've seen some strong activity around CFC Insurance. Now that company was spun off from Stanbeck recently and recently listed. It rose around 6% yesterday to close at around 17 shillings, just over 17 shillings. Is this a stock that you're buying into? Definitely. Looking at uh, a CFC, basically looking at that stock, I guess the concern for that stock right now would be the fact that most investors, my feeling is that they do not understand the dividend specie aspect of it. And because of that, the price discovery is still an aspect of what the market is doing right now. And it's more of a speculative stock in the meantime. And I would be very cautious if I would get into that, such a stock because as of now, I would be very keen to look at the fundamentals as well as the, the future prospects of the insurance holding division because one of the strategies that the bank was looking at in terms of separating the two divisions was to be able to see whether the insurance side could be able to sustain itself. And so we're looking at it in terms of uh, the current trading position of the stock. I guess it's more of price discovery and more of speculative trading, which is a, a bit of a concern for now. And hopefully we are hoping to be able to see the numbers coming through to be able to sustain some of the prices that it's already reflecting in the market.